Hey guys, I'm back with episode 9 of my I Heart Fall series. This is the time that I love cooking with pears and apples and pumpkin. So today I have three delicious recipes to share with you. If you're enjoying the fall series so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and check the info box for full recipes. So first up, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my homemade hot chocolate recipe. This stuff is creamy and decadent, and I promise you, it's gonna warm your soul. <laughs> I'm gonna be making it on the stove because I like to keep an eye on it, but you can definitely put all these ingredients in a crock pot and let it cook for about two hours. And I am making it enough for two, so I'm starting off with two cups of milk, one cinnamon stick, and then I'm using plain unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm adding three tablespoons of that, and you wanna make sure that it's unsweetened because we are gonna sweeten it ourselves a little bit later. Then I'm going to give it a good whisk to make sure that that milk and that chocolate come together. And to sweeten it, I'm using condensed milk. I just love using condensed milk around the fall and winter months. I feel like it's such a warm, cozy flavor. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a pinch of sea salt, and this is gonna help bring out all of those sweet flavors. I keep the stove on low the entire time. I just wanna bring that temperature up without it boiling. And then I just whisk it every two to three minutes just to make sure that none of that film forms at the top. And while those flavors are all coming together, I'm gonna make a whipped cream that goes with this hot chocolate. Trust me, you guys, don't skip this step. This is going to add to that richness of the chocolate. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. So I'm just making a simple whipped cream with one cup of whipping cream, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a fourth of a cup of powdered sugar. And then I'm adding this to my blender, but you can also make this by hand. So now to put the hot chocolate together, I like to top it with two tablespoons of that whipped cream. And this is going to bring the temperature of the chocolate down, but it's also going to add a little extra sweetness and also creaminess to the chocolate. And you guys know I love a good presentation, so I did serve it on a cutting board with a little bit of like semi-sweet chocolate chips, also some cinnamon sticks, some powder cinnamon, and if you guys want, you could also make little skewers with marshmallows and add it to your presentation. I think that would be super cute too. Next up, we're gonna make Gouda and apple grilled cheese. Last year, I shared with you guys a similar recipe using apples and brie, and you guys loved it. So for the bread, I would recommend using sourdough bread. I just think it goes really good with for this combination. And then you could use either yellow or white Gouda cheese. It's up to you. And for apples, I really recommend using honey crisp apples if you can find them or any sweeter type of apple. One side of the toast, I'm gonna butter it with fig jam. And the other side, I'm gonna use a spicy mustard. And it's important that you put cheese on both slices of bread and then add the apple slices in the middle. That way it sticks to the bread. Then I'm gonna press the two slices together and I'm going to add butter to the outside of the toast so it can get nice and crispy. Now my griddle has already been warming up. You can also toast this on a pan. Just make sure you keep it on medium low heat because you want the cheese to get nice and melty but you also want the bread to get toasted without getting burnt. So if you see that your bread is toasting a little bit too fast, then just turn the heat down. And that is it, you are ready to enjoy. You can definitely have this as a snack, as a treat, or you could have it as a lunch with a side salad or a soup, and it's super delicious. Okay, so the last recipe I'm gonna be sharing with you are these super simple baked pears that scream fall. To make the pears, you just need three ingredients, pears, maple syrup, and cinnamon. So you wanna preheat your oven to 375 degrees and then just cut the pears in half. You can use like a melon baller or a spoon to scoop the seeds out. And then I generously apply some maple syrup. You don't really need to measure this, just kind of eyeball it and use enough to coat all the pears and it's okay if some of it gets on the pan because it's gonna create a really nice sauce that you can drizzle over later on. And I'm just making sure that I coat all the pear evenly and then I go in and sprinkle my cinnamon. 
Once my oven is preheated, I go ahead and put the pears in the oven for 30 minutes. And while that's cooking, I take the rest of the whipped cream that I had left over from earlier and then I add some cream cheese to it. So I give it a good mix and I set it aside and we're gonna top the pears with this later on. And then I wanna add some crunch to the dessert. So I'm using Marcona almonds. You can use anything you have on hand, pecans, pistachios, whatever type of nut that you want. And I'm just giving them a rough chop. And then I'm gonna mix them with a little bit of brown sugar. And this is going to help everything caramelize and get super crispy and it's gonna be so good. So once the pears are done baking, I take them out of the oven and I sprinkle them with that sugar and nut mixture. And then I put them back in the oven and put it on broil for three minutes. And you're gonna be left with this beautiful pear dessert. You could totally serve it like this. I think the presentation is absolutely beautiful. Or you could serve it individually and then just apply that cream mixture that we made on top of it. So it's sort of like a la mode. Uh, you could also serve this with vanilla ice cream. I do like to garnish it with a little bit of cinnamon and also extra maple syrup to just make it a little bit sweeter and a little bit more special. I hope you guys are enjoying these fall videos so far. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you missed my last video, I actually did a fall DIY video. So I'll leave it linked down below for you guys. Subscribe if you're new and you're enjoying this channel so far. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.